Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It is October 24th. Lisa, Jared, Scott here with you this morning. One last nice day. We're going to get to our forecast here in a minute. First, I want to remind you, of course, we're live on Facebook every weekday morning. Mm -hmm. It stays on your feed all throughout the day, so you can watch it whenever you want. We also make it into a podcast, so you can find that at inforum.com slash podcast. Mm -hmm. Look for the Inform Minute on our Inform YouTube channel. Of course, the easiest way to watch every weekday morning live on WDAY from 5 to 7. And... Let's jump into it. Yeah. I said it's going to be a nice day today, but we're already talking about some winter preps. Yeah, that's right. Winter preparations almost complete for the Fargo area. WDAY checked in with the street crews for Fargo, West Fargo, and the North Dakota DOT. They say all of their crews are doing their final checks right now to make sure snow plows and all of their other winter equipment are ready to go. Uh, they should be ready to roll by the end of the week, which is when we're going to be talking about some more s snow potentially in the area. Also, last day to get out on the golf courses in the Fargo area. Yeah, here. if you're just not ready to let go yet, like you do me. have, like like yeah. Scott, he has his <laughs> tea time today. Yeah. Uh, today is the last day, though, for a lot of public courses in Fargo. Rose Creek, that's where you're going to be, right? Rose yep. Creek and Edgewood public golf courses will close for the season at the end of today. The other three courses, Osgood, Prairie Wood, El Zagel, already closed for the season in Fargo. Yeah, and you can assume more heads close. Uh, course is probably closing up here anytime uh, soon as well. The courses in Grand Forks also, they're closing today too. So, okay. <sighs> weather's changing, yeah. Jared. Yeah, it is. I mean, yesterday was gorgeous. Yeah, it was. It was. Beautiful, nice. beautiful day out there. And, and today won't be as warm. Generally pretty quiet, mm -hmm. overcast little breeze out there. Tomorrow, another quiet day here. But the snow everyone's been talking about will move into northwestern North Dakota tomorrow. So Williston probably will be waking up to snow and we'll be tracking that tomorrow morning because eventually that's going to fill in across northern North Dakota on Wednesday with the bulk of the snow falling on Thursday. So everyone's going to be talking about the snow this week. Thursday will be kind of the, the main event, I guess. So And eventually that could clip the northern part of the valley. I don't think Fargo will see really any snow with okay. this one, but Grand Forks, we could pick up a little bit along the way. Northern part of the valley. If you're northwest of Grand Forks, you may you have to get out the snow blower. So oh wow. around around Devil's Lake area, we may have multiple inches of snow wow. by the end of Thursday into Thursday night. And then right behind that snow comes the bitter cold, mm. which looks like it's going to last too. So we're going to be tracking 30s this weekend and all of next week. Yeah, and you talked about Halloween a little this morning, looking like it's going to be a chilly one for Halloween. I know. I'm sure a lot of folks are like, well, I'm hoping that I can, you know, not have to plan like a parka over the, the coat. That's always the thing up here. It's yeah. like, yeah. all right, well, I got this great outfit, but I'm going to be wearing a coat over yeah. it. Yeah. So. Oh what goodness. is your son going to be for Halloween? Uh, he is a dog, a little puppy. Oh. Okay. So we did boo at the zoo, so we got to wear it already. So oh, that was fun cute. at the Red River Zoo this past uh -huh. weekend. And, yeah, I think he was a little bit young to care about the trick or treating because <laughs> they were, they handed out treats there. But, sure. but I mean, he was excited to hold. I mean, I don't even remember what candy he got because he's like, ooh. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're not eating that. Mom and dad it. are eating there that. There you go. <laughs> Pick a good one. So, yeah. He wants for this one. So luckily, his dog outfit is is yeah. kind of big and it should be warm enough. But, okay. Well, we're just gonna do some quick trips around to some friends' house. Sure. Awesome. Cool. All right. Can we back up? The, okay. So we're all we all want to talk about the snow, mm -hmm. and we, but today. There's rain. Can you kind of... Yeah, uh, this morning we had some showers. Uh, last I saw, I was up near like Thief River Falls. Okay. So that's kind of tapering off. Most of the day okay. should stay dry. Uh, I think there'll still be maybe a select few showers this okay. afternoon, but um, just bringing the umbrella with is all right, I would say today, but most will end up missing out on that. Dry tomorrow, and then there'll be some rain in the valley on on Thursday mm -hmm. with the snow kind of in the northeastern part of North Dakota. All right. Is this one of those tough ones where it's like the line when it's like, you know, who gets rain, who mm -hmm. gets snow? That, that kind of moves. Yeah, and that, right? that transition, I think, will be closer to Grand Forks. So Fargo, we should have a precipitation in the form of rain on Thursday, but Grand Forks, it may be rain for a while, and then we might see some cold, wet snowflakes in there, and then uh, depending on where this kind of moves on, but what time it moves through in the t in like the placement, mm -hmm. then we might see some of that sticking on the ground in Grand Forks for a while. Okay. And that may not be till maybe after dark. So that's what we're going to be working on, the timing and the placement of this, because these first season ones are always really tricky because the ground is super warm right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, with yesterday, some 60s over almost the whole area. So got to factor in how long it'll take to cool the ground down to actually start sticking, you know, and all yep. that. It's fun, but it's really tricky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. You're going to stay busy year. over the next few days, that's for yes, sure. Yes, we will. So you got me on First News tomorrow yep. and Thursday, so I'll be here kind of watching this thing unfold. Okay. All right. And that Storm Tracker weather app is a great tool right now as yes. well to kind of follow the, the line mm -hmm. and, and the live radar at any time and the alerts. Yep, yep. And, and we update it 
all day long. So mm -hmm. I think my normal shift, I'm updating it four times during the day and then evening side does. Yeah. So we're always sending out different, what, what we're seeing, you know, of, and sure. you know, this is new, so we'll push that out. Okay, Alrighty. good stuff. Thank you, Jared. Right. We'll Appreciate see you in the morning. All right, back to some of our uh, other news headlines. We broke yeah. this story on First News this morning. Fargo firefighters were called out to a water main break this morning. It was quite the mess on the corner of 10th Street North and 29th Avenue North. That's kind of by McKinley Elementary School. Uh, crews were called out right around 4.30 this morning to that pipe burst. They think it's likely uh, because of a buildup in the pipes that it burst. Roads were not blocked off, mm -hmm. but of course the video that we had this morning was quite active and yeah. they were like, you know, trying to get things unclogged. Mm. Looks like they had shovels or something. I don't yeah, know it what exactly. like shovels were. to get like maybe leaves out of the gutters or all wet. And, uh, yeah, it, it was, was a mess. It was definitely a mess. So uh, they, I don't know if they're still out there this morning cleaning that up right now, but maybe just avoid that area for the morning hours while yeah, they're working sense. to get things back to how they're supposed to be. All right, new this morning, we're working to learn the condition of a teenager after a crash in rural Minnesota. The accident sent two people to the hospital, including a 17-year-old girl. The crash happened along Highway 59 in Becker County. That's about 20 minutes north of uh, Detroit Lakes area, just before 6 o'clock last night. The Minnesota State Patrol says the car the teenager was driving was crossing the road. Another car driven by 43-year-old Robert Pearson of West Fargo was coming uh, at that car and it smashed into her car. Uh, Pearson and his passenger did not suffer serious injuries. Uh, the teenager, though, was had, had to be taken to a Fargo hospital. Uh, this morning, lawmakers in North Dakota have decided to reconsider Governor Doug Burgum's tax relief bill. Of course, mm -hmm. today is day two of the special session that's yes. happening. The governor called it last week. We know they only have this week. Uh, number one, they were called back for the special session to redo, kind of iron out the budget bill after the North Dakota Supreme Court threw it out, said it was unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. But the new part today, and we're wondering if they're going to start working on it already, is reconsidering that tax relief plan. The state house voted 71 to 21 to reintroduce it. Uh, if it passes, this is a big one for a lot of North Dakotans. The first $60,000 earned by a single filer would not be subject to state income taxes for the 2024 tax year. The same would go for couples making up to $100,000. Right now, the threshold for single filers is $44,000, uh, close to $75,000 for couples. So a big, big tax relief fund yeah. uh, plan could potentially put a lot more money uh, back into your pocket. So yeah. we're going to continue tracking that along with the budget bill. Uh, happening this week. Lots going on in Bismarck. Yeah. All right, the city of Moorhead has laid out its priorities for the upcoming 2024 legislative session in St. Paul. Uh, these are the items that the Moorhead City Council members believe are essential to the city's long-term prosperity and goals. Uh, number one priority is finding money for flood mitigation efforts. They'll be looking for about $15 million from the state of Minnesota to upgrade stormwater lift stations, uh, build up the Riverview Circle Levee, and raise 40th Avenue South. The city will also, also ask the state for money for various business programs. Those are to help offset the cost between doing business in North Dakota and Minnesota, uh, essentially evening the playing field, and then also money to help the ongoing downtown redevelopment project. Right now, the North Dakota University System is investigating a fraud scheme that almost cost two universities in the state nearly $5 million. Mm. Uh, this is how it works. Someone pretended to be a contractor. They then accessed the university accounting system. $3.8 million from NDSU, $1.3 million from Bismarck State College was put at mm. risk. This is why, because two transfers of funds were actually initiated. They just were not able to be completed, so no money was lost. But uh, too close for comfort. Right now, the state university system is investigating why some of the controls yeah. they had in place to protect themselves did not work. Uh, if you'd like to read more on this, you can find the story at inforum.com. Ongoing national headline. Today marks three weeks since the, since the U.S. House has had a speaker. And today, the House GOP is set to vote for a new nominee. Eight candidates are still in the running for, the, for that position this morning, including Minnesota Congressman Tom Emmer. No legislation like policy bills and government funding bills can pass without a House speaker in place. Uh, the Republicans running for speaker will need to get support from more than half of the lawmakers in their own party. That's before they take a full floor vote where they'll need 217 votes to actually win the job. That full floor vote could happen as early as tonight. Kirk Cousins played the best game of his career with the Vikings. That's what some are saying. I, I don't know if the stats necessarily reflect that, but I mean, it was a big upset last night. I don't think a lot of people thought they could win, but they did it. 
Vikings fans are happy today, yeah. and uh, Dom Izzo is going to be talking all about that today. Hot Mike with Dom Izzo coming up 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra. So, yeah, they beat the 49ers. Yeah. A complete, uh, you know, recap this morning as to mm -hmm. what went right uh, for the first time instead of what went wrong. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, plus, the Bison will have to play this week without one of their top offensive threats. When Murray State comes to town, Kyle Emanuel is going to talk on Hot Mike this morning about some of the lineup changes. That's from 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra and Inform.com. And don't forget, you can get a subscription right now to Inform.com for just 99 cents a month for your first three months. You get an all-access pass. Just go to Inform.com slash subscribe to take advantage of that deal. Remember to join us for our next newscast coming up here at 11 this morning. And then we have you covered this afternoon, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. And we'll be back tomorrow morning from 5 to 7 in the morning for more First News. Have a great day, folks. Bye.